Hello wrestling fans and welcome to another review of a past wrestling pay-per-view. This time it is WCW Bash at the Beach 1994. This show took place on July 17th, 1994, 28 years ago today. Uh, this was kind of a turning point for WCW at this seemingly a turning point. Uh, but, you know, the show went like this. Um, we began, the first match was scheduled to be Sting challenging Lord Steven Regal for the World Television Championship. But they uh, did this angle where Sting had a match with Ric Flair and out came uh, Sensuous Sherry, who we know is Sensational Sherry. She came out from the crowd dressed as a man and she scratched Sting's eyes until Hulk Hogan had saved him. And I don't know if Sting really was injured or unable to do the pay-per-view or he just didn't want the World Television Championship or just didn't want to, did not want to do the honors for Lord Steven Regal, but Regal ended up defending the Television Championship against Johnny B. Bad. Um, these two kind of worked nicely. There was a great chain wrestling to start out. Regal eventually hits a double knee, a standing double knees and then hits a drop kick. Later in the match, Bad hits a head scissor, total wheel head scissor, a hip toss. Then he hits the kiss that don't miss, which was that left hook he was known for. Then he did a dive out to the floor, landing on Regal and his, and his manager, Sir William, who we know as Bill Dundee. Um, they go back into the ring. Bad attempts a sunset flip. Regal drops to his knees and tries to hang on to William's umbrella. Much like the way Regal won back the TV title from Larry Zbysko at Clash of the Champions a month earlier, but the referee catches it, breaks that up. Bad takes Regal down for a pin, but Regal rolls out of that pinning combination. He puts Bad down, albeit a, uh, a handful of tights, and, and Regal retained the uh, World Television Championship. Up next, the late Mean Gene Oakland's in the ring, and he has a plaque for... New Japan Pro Wrestling founder Antonio Inoki. Uh, eventually, uh, Sir William and Lord Steven Regal come back out, and pff, the uh, glitter, the confetti that came out of Jivey Bad's Bad Blaster was still all over the floor and all over the ring because Regal and and William when they and William when they come back in the ring, you see some of that still on Regal's back, and Regal's wondering, you know, why is Inoki getting a, a, an award and not me, and Regal says to Inoki, you know, you may have been in the ring with Muhammad Ali and defeated the late Andre the Giant. But uh, I forgot what Regal carried up saying. Oakland said to Regal, your day will come. And then Inoki says, young man, and takes his jacket off. He's about to fight him, but Sir William pulls Stephen Regal out of the ring. And they eventually face each other a month later at a clash of champions. The second match of the... Uh, pay-per-view, we see Vader accompanied the ring by Harley Race do battle with the Guardian Angel. Now, for those who don't know, the Guardian Angel we knew as, the, was previously the boss in WCW, a, kind of a take on the big boss man character the late Ray Trailer portrayed in the WWF. Now, the problem was, uh, as the boss, he fought Vader back at Spring Stampede a few months earlier. Vader won the match, and afterwards, the boss attacked Harley Race, but Commissioner Nick Bockwinkle, he takes the nightstick and the handcuffs away from him and tells him, you are no longer the boss, and I guess he wasn't seen on TV for like a month, and then we see him hanging around with the, the real Guardian Angels, led by Curtis Sliwa in New York City, and he started wrestling as the Guardian Angel. Right before the bell even rings, Harley Race is like, face to face with Angel Angel takes his hat off slaps race with it throws him out of the ring and then he and Vader go start going at it Vader and here they go and throws the Angel into the into the ropes hits a spin kick a, some kind of a short spin kick Angel recovers with a belly to back soup like a belly to back super but he picks him up and drops him not like he didn't drop him back he picked him like tired him in the back then he picked him up for a body slam and he held him for a, a bit and took a few steps before driving with a body slam. Vader tries for a sunset flip off the second rope but it's thwarted as, angel, as the angel sits on his chest. Uh, Vader eventually come, slams uh, 
Angel near the corner hits the Vader bomb. Then he hits the moon salt. Grace climbs, climbs to the top rope. The Angel, like, press slams him off that top rope. Clotheslines Vader to the floor. He suplexes Vader back in the ring. And I forgot who, but the ref bumped. Somebody bumped into him. Grace brings a, well, some kind of a stick into the ring while the referee's still down. Uh, Vader's going to use it, but the Angel gets his hands on it. The referee turns out. He sees the Angel with the, with the stick in his hand and, hand and calls for the bell, and Vader was victorious by disqualification. Um, that, well, I don't know. It, was like, it wasn't a typical knight. It looked like something like maybe a blind person could use. Well, like, you know, just unfold it, I guess. Then, up next, we have a tag team match, as we saw see The Natural, Dustin Rhodes, and The Enforcer, on Anderson, take on um, Bunkhouse Buck and Terry Funk, uh, with Colonel Robert Parker and Meng in their corner. Now, this all began, Dustin Rhodes had been feuding with Bunkhouse Buck since, since like, the springtime. Um, Buck defeated uh, Rhodes in a Bunkhouse match back at Spring Stampede. Rhodes defeats Buck in a Boro match at Slamboree, and that night, after the matchup, Funk attacks Rhodes, and he and Buck double team Rhodes. Then Rhodes asks Arn Anderson to be his tag team partner. Anderson eventually gives Rhodes his answer at a clash of, at the Clash of Champions a month before this pay per view that he'll be his partner. Arn and uh, Buck start out locking up, but then Buck says, to "Arn, I want Dustin in the ring." Rhodes gets tagged in, and uh, in the early going, Rhodes had, had really had things going his way. He tossed both uh, Buck and Funk over the top rope to the floor, which at the time was a, a, a disqualification in WCW. <clears throat> Damn. Uh, Rhodes missed the high cross, missed the cross body off the ropes on the Buck, and Rhodes had cr crumbled out to the floor. Uh, Funk gives Rhodes a neck breaker back in the ring, then he hits him with a pile driver. Uh, Dustin eventually hits the, his dad's bionic elbow on Funk, and then really goes, really has his way with both Funk and Buck. Finally gets the hot tag to Arn Anderson, and Anderson's up, like all fired up, but then he grabs Dustin, gives him the DDT. Anderson pulls Funk, drags Funk on top of Rhodes, and pins him for a three count enabling Funk and Buck to win the match, and they trip Funk, Funk Buck, and, and Arn. They triple-team Dustin, and they, like, do a number on his arm and leave him laying in the middle of the ring. And the late Gene Oakland is saying to Arn, why, you, why did you do this? And I don't think Arn really gave him an answer, and they were, were going to the back. Uh... Next up, we next matchup we see Ricky the Dragon Steamboat challenging stunning Steve Austin for the United States Championship. Uh, Austin attacks Steamboat before the did a Pearl Harbor job attacking Steamboat before the before the bell got underway. Austin tried for his that's a wrap leg lock on Steamboat, but Steamboat pushed him off with his foot. Steamboat is walking the top rope while hanging on to Austin's arm and delivers a karate chop to I don't know if it's his head or his shoulder. Austin to throw Steve and Steve O's running the ropes. Austin did a double two leap frogs and Austin claimed to have hurt his knee. And Steve O just, just continued to just kick away on, on Austin, so that fake knee injury was Steamboat was not duped by it. Austin had a low back kick to the groin, gives Austin a, a gives Steve a belly to back suplex. Steve eventually does that hangman's choke, or you know, you grab a guy by the neck and pick him up. Uh, Austin hits a spine buster. He uh, gives him a backdrop, Steve a backdrop, and a swinging neck breaker. Steve eventually fought back by giving Austin a stun gun. That was Austin's finisher in WCW, for those who don't know. Um, Steve O nailed his top rope chop. Austin tried to throw Steamboat over the top rope. Steamboat skinned the cat. Austin tried to throw Steamboat over the top rope again, but Steamboat, like, didn't skin the cat a second time, but he was just, he avoided hitting the floor. Uh, Steamboat and Austin, they tease a tombstone. Steamboat hits the tombstone pile driver. Uh, I think 
one point Austin tried to pull the referee in Steamboat's way, and the referee's going to disqualify Austin. But Steamboat says, no, don't do it, don't disqualify him. And then Steamboat went for a flying body press after he bounced off the ropes, but Austin rolled through, he's on top, had his feet, but put his feet on the ropes, and Austin pinned Steamboat to retain the United States Championship. They, Steamboat and Austin always had, a, had good matches with each other, seemingly. Okay, next next matchup we see Cactus Jack and Kevin Sullivan, accompanied by Dave Sullivan, defending the tag team championship against Pretty Wonderful, the late Mr. Wonderful Paul Ondorf and Pretty Paul Roma. Ah, uh, I don't know. These two teams just did not click. I mean, the fans were so bored. They were doing the wave during this matchup. Ondorf eventually hits uh, Kevin with the pile driver and goes for the pin, but Dave Sullivan puts Kevin's foot on Puts, his, puts Kevin's foot on the rope. Uh, Roma eventually hits uh, Sullivan with a top rope elbow. Orndorff does that weird elbow drop he was known for. And uh, I think also earlier match, Sullivan did his stomp to the gut on Orndorff. Uh, Cactus Jag eventually got tag, got the hot tag in. Uh, Roma grabs Cactus's foot takes him down on the mat, and Orndorff gets on top of them and pins him, enabling Pretty Wonderful to win the Tag Team Championship from Cactus Jack and Kevin Sullivan. Next up was the finally the main event of the show as Hulk Hogan, challenged, accompanied ring by Jimmy Hart and Mr. T, challenged Ric Flair, accompanied ring by Sinistra Sherry for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, early in the match, Sherry grabs Hulk's leg as he's coming off the ropes. Uh, out on the floor... Jimmy Hart stops uh, Sherry from using from using a chair on Hogan. Hogan hits a belly to back suplex on Flair on the floor. Uh, Hogan suplexes Flair into the ring. Hulk went for the leg drop early, but he missed it. Flair hits a stalling suplex on Hogan, then he but Hogan gets up like nothing. He uh, gives uh, Flair the boot. But referee goes to count. Sherry pulls the referee out of the ring. Uh, and she goes to attack uh, Jimmy Hart. Hmm. Uh, I think uh, Sherry climbed to the top rope and splashed Hogan. Flair puts, uh, puts the figure four on Hogan. Uh, I think another referee came in by this point. Hulk at one point puts the figure four on Flair. Uh, Sherry climbs up to the apron and she throws something to Flair. In the meantime, Mr. T grabs Sherry off the apron and takes her away from ringside while the referee was tied up with, with Hart. Flair turned out it was brass knucks and hits Hogan with it. But then Hulk kicks out, starts hulking up, hits the three punches, the boot, the leg drop, and becomes the new World Heavyweight Champion and uh, Shaquille O'Neal, who played for the Orlando Magic at the time, presented Hogan with the belt. Well, again, this was like kind of a historical pay-per-view, Hogan's first WCW pay-per-view appearance and wins the World Heavyweight Championship, but even though the, mat the show only had six matches, I mean, I'd say you know, the, the rest of the show helped, helped to make this memorable. Guardian Angel and Vader, good Big Man Battle, uh, Steamboat Austin really was great. The Tag Grudge match, even though it had a bad ending with the, with the heel turn. But the Tag Title match, you know, again, I don't think those teams did click. Uh, well, the thing is, I will say Guardian Angel, you know, that, I hate I, I to say it, that, that gimmick, that character, that was over like a fart in church. Nobody gave a damn about the character. Uh, the uh, well, as far as the the, the saga with uh, Dustin Rhodes, Arn Anderson, Terry Funk, and Bunkhouse Buck. I mean, when when I found out that Anderson turned on Dustin in, in the match, it was right there at that moment I predicted that the late American Dream Dustin Rhodes was going to help his son, you know, deal with them, and that was a, a great moment to me when uh when they did that on TV where Dusty tells Dustin, I want to be your partner. 
but uh, well, again, pretty good pay per view. Uh, I, um, you know, like I said, I mean, Hogan joining WCW really helped help get help get help them get the, the world of the world's attention, basically. But uh, let me know what you guys think of of this past pay per view. WCW Bash at the Beach, nineteen ninety four.